This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Domain.com. LG made a huge deal out of the camera tech inside the G4 when it was announced late last month with its updated laser autofocus, new color spectrum sensor, and an f1.8 aperture. But the G4 isn't the only flagship to offer an amazing camera. When we reviewed the Galaxy S6 a couple of weeks ago, we said the device's 16 megapixel sensor and f1.9 aperture took some of the best pictures we've ever seen, propelling Samsung's phone to the top of the mobile photography charts. Both devices are equipped with high-end specs and some truly incredible cameras, but which one is better? That's what we're here to find out. The Galaxy S6's UI is simple, fast, and efficient. There are a plethora of settings of toggles to turn on and off, and a couple of cool shooting modes available that'll let you refocus an image after the shot, along with a powerful manual mode. The LG G4, on the other hand, features three main shooting modes. Simple, which allows you to take a photo by simply tapping on the screen. Simple Auto, which allows you to tap to focus before snapping a picture. And Manual, which allows the users to take full control of the camera settings. We tested both auto and manual functionality to get the most comprehensive understanding of how these cameras work. We took a few photos outdoors on a cloudy day and while both performed well, we noticed the G4 struggled big time exposing our subject properly when there was a lot of backlight. It has a tendency to overexpose images to a point where highlights clip, which is when the intensity of a certain area falls outside of the minimum and the maximum intensity. The Galaxy S6 didn't struggle with this issue. In terms of color accuracy, the Galaxy S6 seemed to be a bit more vibrant while the G4 displayed a more accurate representation of the subject we were shooting. Now this is due to the new color spectrum sensor inside the G4, which precisely reads the RGB values in the scene. We also didn't notice any digital noise popping up in either device, as you can see from the sample photos. Both the G4 and Galaxy S6 take some of the sharpest photos. The laser autofocus in the G4 is amazing and focus really quick. The Galaxy S6's focusing speed wasn't too far behind, though the Galaxy S6 also offers another neat autofocus trick, which automatically tracks your subject when you move the camera or when your subject moves, something that can be very handy if you have a rambunctious kid. Fortunately, we didn't notice any highlight clipping indoors, though we did notice some of the G4 shot had a tendency to overexpose, which caused the images to look flat and dull. There wasn't enough contrast in the images, and black had a tendency to fade. However, the G4 did do a better job handling auto white balance, whites were white, and didn't display the warm tint that the Galaxy S6 produced. However, the S6's images seemed to be a bit more detailed compared to the G4. I didn't like that the G4's photos looked over-processed. Fortunately, the Galaxy S6 toned down its photo processing, which resulted in great images, as you can see from the sample photos. One area both devices really shine is in their manual modes, which allows users to take complete control of the different camera settings. With the G4, you're able to change the shutter speed, ISO, focus, and white balance, which is in a Kelvin temperature value, but then you can also shoot in RAW, giving you more room to edit and post without the horrible compression and processing that a JPEG file gives you. The S6, meanwhile, only lets users change the focus, ISO, exposure values, and white balance, which came in its usual presets like tungsten, daylight, shade, and fluorescent. Unfortunately, the S6 doesn't let you change the shutter speed. Despite the difference in what you can actually tweak, I like that Samsung and LG allow you to experiment with different settings. However, I think LG has Samsung beat in this category. The G4's manual mode opens up a whole new world in mobile photography. Being able to tweak all the settings really does change the way you compose and shoot photos. When it comes to low-light photography, both devices come equipped with OIS to help prevent shaky shots. However, the G4 attempts to bring that to a whole new level. LG said it devised a new OIS system that is better than any other competing systems, including the one in the S6. We took a few photos inside our studio, and we actually didn't see that big of a difference between the two. In certain shots, the S6 would provide cleaner, less noisy results, and in others, the G4 would produce superior images. It's honestly a toss-up. Both devices struggled to focus during this test, so low-light performance between the two is about the same. The G4's new OIS system and f1.8 aperture didn't really wow us, we thought it performed exactly the same as the Galaxy S6's camera, and our sample photos show that there's not a huge difference between the two. When it comes to the front-facing camera, the Galaxy S6 features a 5-megapixel sensor with an ultra-wide-angle lens, while the LG G4 featured a higher 8-megapixel sensor. Now, despite the G4 not having an ultra-wide-angle lens like the Galaxy S6, the image quality we got with the LG G4 was better. The LG G4's shots were more contrasty, sharper, and they didn't lose as much quality when cropping in thanks to that bigger 8-megapixel sensor. The only advantage I see the S6 has over the G4 is the ultra-wide-angle lens. It's the best for taking the ultimate group selfie, and it's far more flexible when it comes to framing the shot. Nonetheless, both are equipped with great front-facing cameras, and both have their individual perks. It just depends on whether you prefer better image quality or a wider field of view. I personally would rather have the wider-angle lens just because I can frame my shots better. Let me stop the video real fast and thank our friends over at Domain.com. It's the place to go when the next great idea hits you. 
It's a one-stop shopping for all your domain names and web hosting email needs. Domain Want to hook our fans up with a pretty cool offer. Save 20% on domain names and web hosting if you use the coupon code TECHNOBUFFALO. It's all one word in caps at domain.com's checkout. So when it comes to the video quality, both the G4 and S6 are able to film in 4K, 1080p, 720p, and slow motion. But the slow motion on the Galaxy S6 is probably one of the better slow motion features I've seen in any Android device. It's smooth and allows users to control where in a video the slow-mo starts and ends. Now with the G4, you can't really do this. Instead, it'll just play back the entire video in slow-mo. So as you can see from the example videos, the slow motion video we shot on the S6 looks much nicer than the G4. They're the same 720p resolution, but the G4's footage looked more pixelated and muddy. Now when we shot 4K video with the S6 and G4, we didn't notice that much of a difference other than the white balance, though the G4's footage was definitely much sharper to a point where it looks a bit overprocessed. The Galaxy S6 on the other hand featured a much more subtle look. It wasn't overly sharpened like the G4, though it still suffered from that white balance issue we mentioned earlier. The G4's new 3-axis OIS system seemed to work great in 4K and much better in 1080p, while the S6 struggled a bit with 4K in terms of stabilizing the shot. However, bringing it down to 1080p, we noticed an improvement. With all the little quirks aside, the Galaxy S6 offered a slightly better video experience. Keyword, slightly. I enjoy having the better slow-mo feature, though LG seemed to do a much better job in terms of stabilizing shots, whether it was in 4K or 1080p. Now, if LG could fix the overprocessed look in 4K and fix the muddy visuals in its slow-mo feature, I'd pick the G4 over the S6 since the G4 seems to be more stable in 4K and 1080p compared to the slightly shaky video on the S6. Overall, we found that the Galaxy S6 produced much better photos using auto mode while also offering better slow-mo videos. However, the LG G4 produced better photos using manual mode. Since LG gives its users the ability to have full control over the shutter speed, the G4 had a slight advantage over the S6 in this department. Samsung has done a really good job enhancing the user experience and quality of its camera over the past few years, and it's really hard to beat what the company is doing. LG has stepped up its camera game as well, but it still needs a few more tweaks in order to beat its more popular competitor. If you want to see a full gallery comparison between the Galaxy S6 and LG G4, make sure to check out the link below. And if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and we will see you guys in the next one.